The Firearms Radio Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast. In a world dominated by gun bunnies and bad information, one show strives to bring you what you need to hear. They don't care about your feelings. They don't really care what you think. Join these men on their quest to bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly that the firearms industry has to offer. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 388. We showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else you as a gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, and in this show, we'll basically be discussing new pistols. This show, of course, is brought to you by Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Our Primary Arms product of the week this week is the Mantis X10. Uh, If you know anything about the Mantis systems, which... There's a review on the Firearms Insider of the X10 system. Uh, they are remarkable. And the X10 is basically the one that does everything. It hooks to your pistol, your shotgun. It doesn't really matter uh, with all the apps and everything. So you can go check it out if you would like. Uh, if not, check out the other stuff they have. Uh, they're always having deals, always. It seems like. And stuff comes and goes in stock, so... Check back if they don't have what you're looking for. Sign up for their newsletter and more at frn.deals slash PA. And you can also go there just so they know we sent you or the FRN network sets you basically. So tonight we have Tony Rob Zane and a guest. We have Connor from Gun Guys Garage. Uh, He also gave us the pound for pound discount code for the accessories and stuff he sells on his website so you know he we can thank him for that he might even be able to tell us the amount that it is or if it's variable uh so (laughs) go ahead it's 17.2 percent the largest pound for pound (laughs) discount is that because 17.2 percent how the hell did you come up with that (laughs) so i for we like shooting theirs is 171 so 17.1 but I want one bigger for the largest pound for pound <laughs> discount, and so it's seventeen point two. <laughs> nice, ah, nice. Still a pretty I'm solid your discount. Is your garage? So I'm assuming that's the gun guy's it garage. Is, yep, it is. And I, I'll just say this: not that I'm going to brag, but, but my garage is bigger. <clears throat> no, your your oh, chicken sure. coop <laughs> is bigger, Rob. You what, Nana? Your chicken what? your chicken coop, Rob, is bigger. You can call it a chicken coop, a garage, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's a crap hangar I live in. It's, it's a bigger. hangar. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, we'll ask you One the normal size. Yeah, we'll ask you the normal questions. Like, since you own an accessory store, how did you get into guns? So, do, 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 for, the, do, do, do. for the majority of my life, I've just been around guns. Uh, like in Boy Scouts, like six to twelve years old, there was the rifle shooting merit badge stuff. So I'd shoot 22s every, like, Boy Scouts camp we could go to. I'd just, like, skip all the other stuff and just go shoot 22s over and over again. Um, yeah, like, my grandpa had a couple old shotguns. My dad had a few. I've always liked firearms, and I've always liked, um, like, the history behind, like, specifically what comes to my mind now is World War II. All of those cool collectible firearms have always been an interest to me, so even from really young all the way until now where I like to just build them and sell parts to build your own. Yeah, I, I got it. I mean, that's, you know, I was kind of the same way and everybody here got into them different ways, but we're all just old, you know, we're old. You're not. So <laughs> Zane isn't either. Hey, I'm not that old. 
<laughs> and Zane's a kid. He's like 12. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Zane, uh, uh, he has to lie on the 4472 <laughs> when it comes to his age. <laughs> yeah. Get to buy a handgun, he has to say he's 21. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm 27. I, I, oh, you're a child. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at Tony. Tony. Tony's like, oh no, no. And Tony's like, I'm on mute. Thank God. Nope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh-huh. Hey, Tony. I'm thinking about how how many years ago I got out of the Marine Corps. Like 27, <laughs> 30. Uh huh. Uh huh. What year were you born? 94. Oh, he's an assault weapons <laughs> band baby. Uh huh. Because <laughs> they could. <laughs> yeah, I am actually. I, now I that's try to build I, as many hours as I can. <laughs> that's when I graduated high school, man. Yeah. Wow. Tony graduated in like 1888. <laughs> <laughs> he the, the, the emancipation was current news. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll we'll relieve Connor from you know a, answering any other any more embarrassment weird questions. Uh, oh. Oh no, we can go way weirder. <laughs> Yeah, that's for yeah. the pay chat. That's pay chat afterwards. No, nope. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, uh, that's the only fan site. Yeah, but you're just a re- you're just one of us now. So if you have anything to say about stuff or nice. any of that, uh, we'll let you at the, at the end. Yeah. We'll we'll let you oh. plug your stuff. Uh, and if you ain't figured it out, just pipe in. One good. of us will shut up. If not, we'll just talk over each other. Yeah, you, we'll we'll figure you'll figure it out. <clears throat> yeah. So, right. did anybody do anything cool in firearms this week? I did two things. Jack bleep. So the normal my butt off over his last week and a half. The normal for Rob. Yeah, well, I'm in outage mode, so it's like all sorts of crazy crap. Anyways, next. <laughs> next. Well, Zane said he's going to be busy. So yeah. uh, what I did, what I did was, um, <laughs> I went on and uh, started working on the seven six two by thirty nine pistol build. I'm trying to make it look a certain way um, because I have to buy. Excuse me, build a new lower. Because this chosen firearms drop in trigger is just cross threaded and jammed up in this lower, so I can't use it. And the safety on it no longer works, so the gun goes bang regardless if the safety is activated or not. Hmm. So, pretty much, that's just garbage to me now. That lower is no more unless I want to cut the trigger out and do all kinds of craziness or. I got multiple lowers here that I could use, strip lowers. So I'm building a pistol up. So I was taking advantage of the Labor Day sales using the Brownells code. Uh, Brownells, what, what, what do you call that? Affiliate link. Yep, I use the Brownells affiliate link. So we're going to be getting like seven cent. Um, so I use that. <clears throat> so that's what I did with guns. I tried to go out, but if you guys know it or not, Jersey was hit by tropical storm whatever because i really wasn't paying attention and, uh, or isis or isol or whatever yeah <clears throat> and um a lot of places got shut down and routes to and from places got shut down so i couldn't go to the range so i decided to spend some money trying to build this pistol build though it's gonna be sick, sick. gotcha <laughs> gotcha nice. so we like sick connor did you do anything before i go a few a few things and are we able to show yeah, guns without like. Hand- yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Every everything so, we own is airsoft. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice airsoft pistol <laughs> so you I, got there. I put this one together, and I was really looking forward to trying the Strike Industries mass driver. And boy, does that make it way weird but awesome to shoot. No, nope. it just makes it feel like the whole gun's doing the worm in your hands. <laughs> so <laughs> it Chad mitigates did you the recoil. Do a review on the mass driver. I d- I did. It is it is still. One of the my most favorite comps that doesn't need so, anything. Yeah. So wait a minute. Now refresh my memory. That thing is attached to the barrel, or it's attached to the frame. And it's it's its own guide rod. It attaches to a guide rod. Yeah. And you don't need oh, a thread. Guide rod. Yeah, you really? don't need a threaded barrel. And then it's a spring I have system. One there. Yeah, I've used it with both. And it what what the mass driver does is it's got a spring in it. So when you shoot it, it also pushes forward against the spring that's in the comp itself and then it also yeah oh that's okay yeah it's it's pretty cool and then of course it directs gas it kind of works like a a silencer almost to help level out the barrel or level out the uh the The recoil right recoil system yeah it kind of and it's i it's it's hard to explain how it feels because it doesn't feel like a normal comp like connor was trying to say but it's I, of all the pistol comps I've used, besides 
custom ones for custom race guns, which don't really count in my opinion for yeah. something and, and normal people are just going to go out and buy. The mass driver is one of the best I've used. Okay. So that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Did, I'm not into the whole race gun thing, but yeah. So did you build that pistol? Is it like a polymer 80 or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, polymer 80 PF 940 C. I just got a bunch of the like polymer 80 extras on top of it and the Swamp Fox. I if this is a Kingslayer. Actually, actually, hold on. So, hold on. Let me. Uh, oh, there you go. What's, Full the, what's yeah. the other side look like? That is the Kingslayer. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So. I, ha- I have a Kingslayer. Right, so, it's in the other So, one thing I'm now. dying to know I've got two P80s. I haven't built them out yet. I'm sitting here thinking, you know, it'd probably be, be cheaper just to go down and buy the Dagum Glock brand new as opposed to building it out. Oh, it is. Most of the okay. time. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> maybe. Yes. And speaking of Swamp Fox, I don't have it on me, but they did send me one of the Liberties in green that I just got last week for review. And so I took it out. Uh, I took it out and sighted it in because okay. I have a. So, so, Connor, on Gun Guys Garage, can we get parts to build out a uh, Glock? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got a bunch of random Glock stuff. Um, uh, at 17.2% of off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of them are currently on the website, but got like slides, barrels. You got slides with G-19 the build up for, stuff. for uh, optic? Yes. Now you're going to put him on Let the spot see. make him find stuff. I see how you are. Oh, man. <laughs> so, like, so I'm not super good with the camera, but that mm. has an RMR. Oh, nice. It's the Live Free Armory with the. Something. Top hat. Yeah. So it's so like yeah, a threaded barrel. And, yeah. Will that fit the, uh, yeah, the no. Swamp Fox uh, comp- Comper or no? The the their uh, yeah the optic? inertia drive system. Oh, you mean I'm the, sorry, the, the uh, Strike yeah. Industries? Yes, it yeah, pretty yeah. much will work on ninety five percent of all slide pistol. Yeah. And it'll work with a threaded barrel or without. Oh, when he sells the mass driver, we can get that at seventeen point two percent off. <laughs> and the slide. <laughs> Oh, yeah. See, it's there you go. It's becoming a, a, a show for uh, <laughs> Gun Guys Garage. Well, that's, yeah. So Now, we're going to talk about our newest sponsor, Gun Guys Garage, later. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll hit him up later. Uh, but Yeah, we, we need something more than 17.2. Like, I'm, I'm thinking like 25 or 30% off would be nice. <laughs> Rob's like, yeah, Rob's starting to... Then I'd have to, like, raise the prices Rob's first. Rob's <laughs> starting to sound like Tony. <laughs> hey, well, he'll raise the prices twenty percent and give us a twelve percent discount. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's the way to do it. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. I like I said, I got that new Liberty optic too. All I have is the cover that came with it. They sent the little iron side so metal plate too. They sent you the cover and no optic. No, the optics mounted on a gun in in the safe. I just didn't uh, okay. bring it in here. I was like, I'm just okay. not going to because Maybe I forgot. You know, <laughs> I was actually thinking I've got a PS ninety with the uh, that built in rail that come they come with. I'm really thinking about getting a uh, one of those uh, MRO or one of those little optics to throw on top of it. Oh yeah, right just now I've got a burst fast fire and I freaking hate bursts. Yeah, I'm ready to take it and throw it out the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can understand it's why. One of those. I bought that. Hey, the the gun the gun the gun show guy the gun store guy's like this is the best ever. I'm like okay. Yeah, well, never trust those idiots at the gun store. They don't know squat. <laughs> Nice. They so, had a quota to make. Uh huh. They had a quota to make. That's been, all that was. Or it had been sitting there for a year and a half. <laughs> or they're trying to get some. Or they're on a commission or salary, or commission probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it could. So we can get into our announcements. Of course, bandwidth sponsor is our buddies over at Patriot Patch Co. You can go join the Patch of the Month Club. Uh, I have not seen mine yet, but they're sending them out. So. You know, it should show oh, I got up. Mine, soon. The lady that's in the back. It's yeah, the yeah. Lady Liberty with the nods. Yeah, yep, it's yep. pretty interesting. It's yeah, cool it's one. it's pretty cool looking. Not uh, my favorite one, but it's a good one. Yeah, it's 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 a good one. Uh, so there's that. Uh, you can also check out all their other patches, limited edition patches. Uh, I think they still might have shirts and cleaning mats and all kinds of stuff. Hey, aren't they doing a new limited edition release this week or something like that? Yeah, it's like a I don't know Jurassic Park Friday? cheek or something yeah. yeah something like that so you might check out their website see when that is uh of course all our affiliate links are in there uh you can check them out some of them you know addable optics you can get a 20 percent off 
discount from their website, uh, Walker Defense. We also have a 15% off discount, of course. Then there's the Gun Guys Garage that gives us a 17.2%. And the rest are just straight affiliate links. Uh, So they help us out. Yeah, they they help us out because they let us know that the manufacturers know that we're sending traffic to them. So they're at least keep us with the two or three cents a month. And that's less money we have to pay to hosting and a lot of the crap. Yeah. Yeah. It, I don't know about Chad, but I don't get paid for this stuff. <laughs> we get paid. You don't get paid? No. <laughs> no. Oh, I got to renegotiate my contract next year. Don't worry. I'll, I'll give you the same pay Tony gets. <laughs> <laughs> I want double. Not a penny less. I'll, I'll double it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rob, is it my turn? It is your turn. Oh yay! The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and/or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows, and for tonight, we're considering Connor a co-host because we probably need to add co-hosts and/or guests, but. Nah, whatever. <laughs> and now, hey, wait, we got a review tonight. Hot night. Chad, you're on the ball. I did, you know, I had an extra day. <laughs> hey, hot, hot dang. Hey, man, yeah. this, is a, this is a family show, man. Watch the language. <laughs> uh, so language. we do have a main topic sponsor. Uh, I think that's about done, but we do for this week. So it's Midwest Firearm Solutions. Uh, you know, I, you can go to their website. It's in there. They do Custom Cerakote, laser engraving, all kinds of different things. They're working on getting like an 07 FFL. They do have an FFL, of course. But, you know, so if you want to go there, I saw he had some, oh, Aero Precision lowers for sale the other day. Uh, they're probably all gone by now, but you never know. So, oh, it, hey, real FFL, quick. Can you ship, ship them <laughs> short barreled rifles or... Full auto guns or no? I be- they have to have a, the, see. I don't know. I'll have to check with them. Yeah, check with them because I think you can. Because yeah, if they have a class three, they should be safe. Right. It's it's they need the O seven. Like he's. He, I ask him. Can to you, make it. He, he, like yeah. So if he needs to seracote something and then sell it, he needs the O seven as a manufacturer or something like that. So, but yeah. if you mention the Gun and Gear Review podcast, you will get ten percent off seracoting. And now for the review of the new Faxon Rimfire 1022 barrel. I'm just going to show it on here because the picture's in the review over at the Firearms Insider yeah. TV are yeah, way that's better. The Faxon 1022, um, uh, not non non uh, barrel barrel. <laughs> non barrel barrel. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a firearm for anybody on YouTube watching. Yeah, a barrel is not a firearm. It's just something you attach to a firearm. You know, so. You know, as most of our listeners probably know, and most people, that Faxon has been making quality barrels for quite a while now. Uh, just recently, they did enter the rimfire market with their 1022 barrels. In fact, just the other day, they added another one. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so what they do is they offer three different barrel contours to that you can choose from uh, and two different types of fluting. Uh, there's three different coating options to choose from. Of course, I opted for the flame fluted standard profile in chameleon PVD. Why? Because it's cool looking. Uh, Of course, the Faxon 1022 barrel has a bunch of features not provided by the factory Ruger models, of course. And most notably, of course, is the flame fluting. Uh, Faxon does a unique style of fluting as one of the options. Of course, it looks like flames. Uh, on this particular chameleon barrel, it actually, because the PVD coats differently for different recesses, that it actually looks more realistic than it, some others do. Because like in this particular case, it's kind of a yellowish gold color inside the flame flute. So it looks cooler and more like flames. Uh, but of course, fluting does other things besides just give it good looks uh it will give it more surface area to dissipate heat uh and it's a rimfire barrel so i'm not too concerned about that but more importantly is it reduces overall weight in the from the normal barrel uh this particular one is 0.4 pounds lighter than a factory 1022 barrel 
Uh, Faxon also makes a pencil barrel profile, which is another 0.4 pounds. So if you really want to get something light, you can get one of those. But the this particular standard profile flame fluted weighs in at 1.4 pounds, which, you know, still 0.4 pounds lighter than the standard factory barrel, which can't complain about. Now, when Faxon manufactures the rimfire line they pretty much use the same stuff they use on their like rifle barrels ar barrels stuff like that uh it's these are made from 416 r stainless steel bar stock uh they are made in the fax and plant in i think they move now but in ohio uh so they are made in the usa uh they give it six rifling grooves it's a 116 twist which is pretty much standard for most 22 rimfire barrels they do cut a recessed target crown in the muzzle. They thread it half 28 to a depth of 625, which is not really normal on a 22 barrel, but they do provide a thread protector and a spacer. And the spacer basically cuts it to a 400 depth of thread instead of the 625. Uh, basically, that is for if you buy threaded accessories for rim fires they're usually threaded at 400 depth but if you're buying something for like an ar or something like that it's a 625 depth and you know you don't want to screw the wrong one on too far and maybe damage it if you're running like a rim fire suppressor or something uh, after that they mar- magnetic particle inspect them and then they heat treat them and coat them of course all of the current fax and rim fire lines are 16 inches in length now Typically, when you look into 1022 barrels, you find the bull style barrel. Uh, and those are what Faxon just recently released. So they now make bull barrels also. Uh, but this particular barrel is tapered profile. It goes from 912 thousandths of an inch and down to 600 right before where the muzzle threads are, uh, which is basically a standard barrel profile from like Ruger really close to it the one i have actually did fit in the standard stock ruger 1022 stock uh it may not fit all of them but it happened to fit in the one i have uh, i did try it before doing other things with it uh they give faxon gives the rimfire line a sporting chamber uh gives the faxon 1022 barrel ability to feed almost all of the 22 long rifle ammunition out there i personally would have liked to seen a different chamber like a Bents, which is kind of between a match and a sporting chamber. But I also understand why they went with the normal sporting chamber. Uh, that's just kind of one of the things I would have liked to have seen. However, I did end up mounting the faction barrel to a stock Ruger 1022 action, which is basically the receiver and the bolt are stock. Uh, the barrel slid in about like any 1022 barrel does in, you know, little very little side to side movement and it just kind of slid in. Then you mounted up with the little V block. Uh, I did, however, put it in an Enoch deep six chassis. Uh, I kind of opted for the chassis because I thought it would be a better look for it with this barrel than, you know, a standard stock or maybe even a Boyd stock or something like that, where I think the, the chassis does the barrel a bit more justice. Uh, plus, the chassis is lighter than a lot of wooden stocks, so it makes the combination very light. Now, after I assembled everything, you know, started with, I had to take it to the range, so I scrounged around for a bunch of different 22 long rifle ammo in my storage bins. Uh, I found about eight different types of blinking ammo. Couldn't find any match ammo, which I swear I had somewhere, but you get the idea. Uh, but I figured the blinking ammo is fine for this test, especially since this is not a true match barrel it doesn't have match chamber or anything like that it is still very high quality uh you know so i don't want to deter from that even though you know just because it doesn't have a match barrel doesn't mean it's a quality barrel uh you know of course i shot the various cheap ammo through the barrel at 50 yards uh most of the brands except pretty much one of them grouped around one one and a half inches uh, I did start with five shot groups and moved them up to 10 shots. They were all pretty much about the same. Of course, the factory barrel on that particular one ran about two to three inches with that stuff at 50 yards. So, you know, I figured, nah, that's good enough accuracy for what this is supposed to be. 
if you were to take the time, figure out which ammo your barrel prefers, you could probably expect better results than what I had. Of course, that's just if you want to take the time and figure it out. Of course, I was like, eh, you know, I got eight, seven different ammos to choose from that all shot an inch to an inch and a half. I'm good to go. Uh, so, of course, as usual, if you're looking for something different in the 1022 game, look into the Faction Rimfire barrels. Uh, they aren't necessarily cheap, but they are excellent quality and made in the USA. Uh, with all the different options you can get from lightweight, fluted, flame fluted, coated, etc., uh, I'm very pleased with the quality of the barrel and how it stands out from everyone else's boring barrels. Uh, so you can head over and check out the Faxon Rimfire line if you're looking at either building one from scratch or just looking to modify your current one. So the Firearms Insider Review, eight key points. Of course, the claim to fame is a lightweight 1022 barrel. Target market, 1022 owners or builders wanting a lighter, more accurate barrel. The features and benefits, it's a 22 long rifle sporting chamber. This one is flame fluted, 416 stainless. It weighs 1.4 pounds, is 16 inches. Does have chameleon PVD coating. Uh, the recessed crown, it is a non-takedown version, uh, which probably matters. It is threaded half 28. The th thread protector and spacer do come included. Of course, if you want other options, finishes, you can get straight fluted, pencil, Heavy, all in black, gold, or chameleon. Now, there's a, what others are saying. Somebody gave it five stars at Faxon. I could not find any other reviews on them uh, at this particular point. The price point, MSRP is $175 to $355. Now, of course, the as tested, it is one of the most expensive at $355. So if you are looking to get one, you can head over to Fax and Firearms, or your local Fax and dealer might happen to have one or two. So for our rating, the pros, it's lightweight. It looks great. It's accurate. It is threaded to 625 length, which actually I prefer. I'd rather put a spacer on it, but that's me. Uh, and the spacer and thread protector is included and matches the barrel. Uh, of course, it fits, fits standard 1022 stocks, and it, it does have a lifetime guarantee. The cons, of course, is the price. They are pricey since this particular barrel costs more than the stock 1022 costs uh, and the sport chamber. So I gave it a score of 7.5, which was good. If they were a little less expensive, I probably would have bumped that up a little bit. So do you guys have any questions on it, or should we move along? Okay, when, when, yeah, when you were saying that it was, uh, what, 2 inches at 50 yards? Inch and a half. Inch, inch and a half at 50, that's 3 inches at 100. But you said it's not it's not a matched barrel, so, I mean, it looks cool as all get out. Right, and, and when mean, you it compare like it to, stock. like, a stock 1022 barrel, the accuracy is and, and given that better. you were just using probably, what, the, the, oh, the white box or white label ammo, the... the Whatever ammo you any, found, any right? of the bulk ammo, basically, that given, you can find. Given the fact that that's probably about all the ammo we have right now, because that's all the ammo we can get right now. I did shoot some CCI mini mags through it, and they were probably the mo uh, or CCI standard velocity right. also. And did, you didn't try it with a silencer, did you? I did not. I thought about it, and I was like, it, it might help, but I don't, I don't know if it would have helped the accuracy that much. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. So. I mean, it looks like. But like I said, like you said, the biggest drawback to me on this thing is the price for the high end barrels. Hey, exactly, and, and it's that's I mean, the thing is three fifty five. That's about the price of a Ruger ten twenty two. You know, oh, they're like a st the base model ones are like two hundred and fifty bucks around here. So, and and that's why I kind of you know you want to understand I mean, that it's for builders, kind of more like the pistols. You buy a Brownells receiver ten twenty two receiver, you know, you, maybe you get a tandem cross bolt or something in one of these barrels yeah, if, if i'm going to do that i'm going to want to match a match barrel to get really really good tight groups because i mean i've got a couple 1022s that are legitimate tack drivers at 100 yards and yeah. were, were you shooting these offhand or were you shooting them from a bench rest that was from a bench just a okay. just a sandbag nothing yeah same same yeah it's, it's just more stable than offhand or more yeah and no, i had a it, it was only it was a three to nine power scope i mounted on it just it's one that I just have on a on a quick detach mount, basically that I put on stuff when I need to do some sort of accuracy testing at 
you know, yeah. normal Take, ranges. What, about three or four rounds to get a sighted in? Yeah, it, literally, because it's pretty close no matter what you mount it on. It's got the same yeah. base and everything. I mean, it, it looks slick on the rifle you got to set it up on. I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bogart the whole no, chat no. conversation. but <laughs> No, 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 I mean, no, that's, they they were answering, so, you know, that works for me. So you know if they make a a match grade barrel for this or is that coming out? I know? D- they didn't okay. say anything. Uh, okay. It wouldn't surprise me knowing them because, like I said, they just added the bull barrels. So well, that's coming down the pipe pipeline probably. Then yep. So good good assumption. So we can get into our product spotlight in discussion now, so that so that per- certain people like Timothy Knight won't ask us about carpet cleaning anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But first up, FN has introduced the 502, which I know Rob is probably ecstatic about. But I'm oh, actually, God, yes. <laughs> I'm actually, <laughs> actually like this too. It is MSRP's 499 bucks, and if you haven't heard, it is their new 22 long rifle. Uh, it looks like the FNs always do. So there is that. Uh, it is single action only. So it's not double single or anything like that or striker fired. Uh, it has a mag capacity of 10 or 15 rounds, depending on which one you get. Uh, it weighs 23.7 ounces. It's a 4.6 inch long threaded barrel. So the overall length is 7.6 inches. Of course, it has a 1 in 16 in- twist rate. Oh, imagine that. Uh, it's 5.8 inches tall. It's 1.4 inches wide. Approximately a 5-pound trigger pull. Five and a half inch sight radius. Uh, let's see. It is suppressor ready. It is optics ready, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, the slide is aluminum and steel, so it's not running like a plastic slide like some other competitors. Uh, it does have a chamber indi- indicator, suppressor height sights. They are fixed, so you know you need a punch or some or a sight pusher to move them. Uh, but either way. You can get it in their FDE of, you know, three different colors or black. Uh, it does have a safety. The safety does work the proper way. Uh, it is has full ambi control, so basically the slide stop, slide release, whatever you want to call it, and then the safety. Uh, but, yeah, you flip it up. It's similar to a 1911 safety, I guess, is your best, best way of putting it. Uh, it does have a you know, little hammer with a, you know, circle in it to reduce weight. Unlike the claw hammers that Tony has on his CZs. But to me, the price seems quite nice. Uh, it's an FN. So we know the quality is going to be there. Uh, it looks like there's a little slider on the magazines so you can load them easily. Uh, kind of like the original Ruger Mark twos and stuff had a uh, little slider on that. So you can load them easily. You know, I don't think you could probably go wrong, especially if the magazines feed reliably. Uh, yeah, it just looks it looks like a home run to me. Uh, that's my opinion. What so, do you What do you guys got on it? I am totally digging this pistol. Now, my <laughs> my big hits are number one. It comes with a if you get the fifteen round, you get a fifteen round and a ten round magazine. And Tony's gonna be like, "Shut up, Rob! I can only get the ten rounds in Jersey." But what I love about this, it comes from the factory, set up for an optic, set up for a suppressor. Now, Tony, can you have that in Jersey with the, the suppressor set up or no? Yes. Oh, thank God. That's a good thing. But you just have to have the 10-round ten, the ten round mags, right? Yeah, I'm going to be stuck with the 10-round mags, but that's cool um, because you could go to a free state eventually and you can have 15-round mags. I think that's pretty cool. Um, uh, hope. I'm just going to dig in the, uh, the safety on the, the back. I, I I've I've got safeties on some on some of my pistols and inevitably my thumb will get up there especially when I've done it half the several times when I'm shooting a match I'll flip the safety up by accident and I'm like why won't this gun work so, dumb dumb you hit the safety by mistake so well what I mean, you I'm have gonna... to do is change up and 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 ride the safety every time you draw the gun or bring the gun up you just since it's the correct way um it's easy to flip the safety off and just ride it unlike my ruger sr22 which has the incorrect i kind of like it because it's a great training gun um when i'm trying to teach teach someone on something that's about the right size but doesn't have the recoil i think it's awesome um the price well for what you get everything that's involved cool uh the trigger 
uh, that's kind of a heavier weight on a trigger, but so is the FN 509. I mean, really, yeah. because the first thing you do after you shoot of, you know, for a while is go, I'm going to put an apex trigger in this thing. So maybe if it's popular and becomes like the new training pistol, um, there will be a market out there to aftermarket parts on it. I mean, it'd be I, nice if it was double action. It would be. Yeah. It would be. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think you're right, though. Double, double action would have been a big hit. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm totally digging this gun because I've got the FN 509. I absolutely love that pistol. And this is a great gun to do training, like you said, do training with, do practice with. Um, especially, well, the 22 right now is going for what 9mm used to go for about a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. And I wonder, I wonder, can you dry fire with it a lot? Because Ruger definitely says you can dry fire with their twenty two. I think most I, I of think them nowadays. Can, but I'd probably get one of those twenty two snap caps. You only, and the nice thing about having the hammer is you could dry fire, cock the hammer, dry fire, cock the hammer, dry fire. You know, if it was double action, you could just bang, bang, bang. Because I've got the FN FNX nine, which is bang. You know, it's double action, so you can shoot it with the hammer down. But. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, you are huh? talking to an FN fanboy here. I do like the FN product. <laughs> oh, I, I had a great time with that nice FN. One. Yeah, hmm? I had a great time with FN. Um, I got to shoot a lot of their product line at the uh, – they had a range day. And I don't know if it was badly advertised or what, but I was the only dude that showed up. So that uh, was a great range day for me too. The biggest drawback <laughs> I have to FNs, or one of them, is their magazines are about 45 to 50 bucks where you can get them at. And I don't know what these mags are going to come in at, but if you want to get some backup mags or some replacement mags, you're going to be. It's not going to be a twenty bucks for a Glock mag or fifteen bucks for a, a well, one of the off-brand magazines or the Magpul, one of the Magpul Glock mags, which they're selling for fifteen to twenty bucks. So you'll be spending extra for mags, but you know. Yeah. But I do like though the mags that that little that little uh, slider where you can actually move down the uh, the the follower on the magazine. That makes it so much easier to load them. You got yeah, just like what Connor's doing. That makes it so much easier to load them, especially for twenty twos. Yep, definitely. You have to you have to yeah. slide the, the round in because it's got the uh, rim. The case is the yeah, the rim is bigger than the case, so you got to get it in there just right, or it ain't gonna work. Yep. And I think the price of it's actually still a pretty decent range because like this is the this is the Tactical Solutions Glock twenty two G nineteen size slide, and this is like four hundred bucks. Yeah. You still got to build the polymer eighty frame, five hundred bucks all together, maybe, maybe almost six hundred, and yeah. it's about the same price as an FN, so not a bad price. I mean, the, the price was what five hundred bucks, right? Yep, and that's MSRP, so yeah. Well, nowadays you probably be paying yeah. MSRP <laughs> True. for most of these guns, especially for new stuff. But yeah, so that is the FN five o two. Next up. It's not a site to put on it, but it is a site. Holo, Holo Sun has, I guess it's the AEMS site or AIMS site, I guess. MSRP is four seventy fifty eight to five hundred five eighty seven. Basically, the cheaper one's red and the more expensive one is green. Uh, but it is it does use their multi reticle system. This is essentially for rifles or AR style pistols, AKs, stuff like that with a pick rail on top it runs lower third co-witness uh if you run in sights uh you know it's got clear flip down lens covers which they don't really show very well on their website but they do have it uh and what their multi-radical is you can either have a dot a circle or the circle dot uh typical hollow sun stuff like we said red or green the size of this thing is it's 2.22 inches long and total height is like 2.52 inches, and that's from the bottom of the mount to the top of the site. Uh, it looks like it's more so about 1.6 inches to where the center of the optic is, uh, and it's one and a half inches wide. Uh, it runs their solar fail safe if you want to run it that way. It does have their shake awake technology. Uh, it's running super LEDs, which I think is just for brightness. Uh, multi-layer reflective glass. It's got a fairly s large field of view. I don't know. I'm sure I'll come across it here in a second on where it is. Uh, the motion on d remembers the last setting you had it on. It does have up to a 50,000 hour battery life with the CR2032. I think it takes uh, all of that, you know, 
with a bunch of other stuff. Of course, I click on something and now I'm all screwed up. Um, but what it, let's see, did I forget anything? Like I said, they have red and green. It is not a optic. It is just a 1X sight. They have eight daylight and four night vision settings. So, you know, you can run a whole di- bunch of them. The window size is 1.1 by 0.87 inches, it looks like. So, decent size window. It is 7075 aluminum. Uh, the adjustments are half MOA. Uh, you know, for this type of site, I, I saw some of the pictures other people have with the flip up lens covers. I don't know if you would ever need to flip them up. Uh, from what it was looking like to me, but they're there if you would like them. Uh, it's, you know, it looks pretty decent for what it is. Uh, I like the hollow sun stuff. So, you know, I'd, I'd put one on an AR if they, you know, sent me one. <laughs> I'd even consider yeah, buying actually, one. Go ahead, Zane. Yeah. I actually really like the, the, the lens cover idea because I, I'm rough with, things and i scratch and break things so it's nice that i can just have the lens covers on but if i need to put the gun into use right now i can use them with them flipped up because they're clear and then flip them down when i get a chance um and then still get me a little bit of protection on my glass when i'm not using the gun so i i kind of like that feature personally yeah I, I i did too i was like yeah i can i can see where that's a useful feature yeah i think uh Howelson is is pretty much shifting gears and probably bypassing vortex as the go to um a lot of a lot of optic for your money kind of Reasonably product price you mean yeah <clears throat> i think so um i look at this i mean it's new so of course i'd never buy this during the first year because let other people beta test this sorry i'm not going to but it it seems like something really cool and i'd definitely put one on especially if they gave it to me <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And you can contact me at Tony at diversityshoot.com. Oh, I see how you are. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. That's how I am. I, I oh, hope I'm yeah. not shocking. I hope I'm not shocking anymore. <laughs> nope. Uh, Connor, just so you know, by the end of the night, he's going to try to talk you into giving you his entire, your entire uh, stock. Yeah. Shipping Already, to, to New Jersey. Already started. <laughs> he, he, he's typing up. I a don't lot. have a lot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Do you, yeah, whatever I have, I've. I've got a couple things I could send your way. Do you want an A2 pistol grip? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Why not? I might start and selling them now. Gentlemen, it's called a callback. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Connor, do you have you any experience? Again. Do you have any experience with the hollow suns? Yeah. Um, I've actually had pretty good luck with all of the hollow suns that we've sold or I've tried out. I. I haven't really seen that one like in any reviews so far, but it's yeah. got to be a pretty solid optic, good price. Yeah. I'd be happy yeah, to try good. it too. Yeah. I, well, I, here's my question: Is how come the green dot costs about forty bucks more than the red dot? I I don't know. Is that just we can because we that's, are and we're going to? I think I think that's pretty normal with with pretty much all yeah. red dots or dots. The greens, I guess the LEDs are a little more expensive. And also, you got to remember, you're going to probably either get less battery life or they're going to have to do something with the electronics in there because green uses more power. Yeah, yeah green is like definitely. This, yeah. With 2032, if you're going to use this on a, on a bedside rifle or a go-to rifle, I'd change the batteries out, at least when I change my smoke detectors out, you know, just to make sure you've got a good set of batteries when you need it. Yeah, you like know? once a year. I mean, that. yeah, I got you. There you go. Yeah, so um, I was watching a couple of reviews with him and listening to what people have to say, and it was all positive. Um, so, but you know, that's usually well. Excuse me, the people that were doing these reviews, I believe what they said over the tons of people that get free stuff, and then it's the greatest thing ever, and then you find out they never shot it. So at least uh, yeah. Aaron Cohen is usually my go-to when it comes to optics because he does stuff even I haven't figured out how to break yet. And uh, he said it was solid. So I, wa- I watched the first half of that, and then I don't remember what happened, but I had to pause it and hadn't finished it yet. And I was like, right when he was about to start dropping it on concrete. And I was like, man, I got to go back and finish it. Yeah, but I mean, he's going to drop the, you know, never mind, I've done that. Yeah, I, I'm like, what are you saying? Yeah, I've, I've done yeah, it not I on mean, purpose, I mean, too. If you think about to, it, to me, an shoulder height like exists. 
yeah, to, to me, an optic like this should be able to take a drop from at least six feet and land square on the optic and still function. Yeah. Because I, because I guess concrete how many times exists and shoulder height exists in the world. Yep. Because what, what, what in shoulder height? Yeah, well, it's like... Concrete exists and yes. so does shoulder oh, yeah. height exist. Especially when I'm at the gun range and the thing rolls off the table. That's happened several times. Yeah. That, or you yeah. have a garbage sling and your sling becomes undone while you run in the class. And all, yeah. <laughs> you go to transition and it just keeps going down when you release it. <laughs> like, where the, where'd the rifle go? Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. So that was the Hollow Sun Ames in red or green. Uh, next up, uh, Adam Arms, who we haven't heard anything from in quite a while, has released their AA-19 pistol. MSRP is nine hundred ninety nine ninety nine. Okay, <laughs> it is a Glock nineteen size pistol in nine millimeter polymer frame. Uh, it is, of course, fifteen plus one capacity. It includes two magazines. Uh, it's the complete machined billet nine nineteen four sixteen stainless slide. It is black knight tried coated, uh, match grade rifling, enhanced accuracy. It is threaded. For half twenty eight, so you for suppressor use, uh, one in sixteen twist. It's running a pre captured guide rod. It does run a Tango Down Vickers tactical carry trigger. It has mounting plates compatible with pretty much RMR, Delta Point Pro, Burst, Fast Fire, Vortex, Venom, Viper, blah blah blah. You know, basically all the all the normal stuff. Uh, so so that's that's nice. It doesn't look like. It has suppressor height sights, or they might be slightly taller than normal. I can't quite tell, but my opinion on this is if you look at it, it's essentially a Adam Arms marked polymer 80 frame. Serialized, of course, and, and by them, and different texture and stuff like that. But that's pretty much what it is. Uh, so I think, in my opinion... Their price is out of the ballpark for what you get. Uh, that's my opinion. I, I'm great. There's another option out there, but for what what I'm getting, I just don't think it's worth the price. Sorry, Adam's arms. Sorry, cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody Who's going next? You, you can yeah. go, Tony. So it's butt ugly. <laughs> All right, let's just get that out of the way. But uh, it, it it looks like if you gave someone an extra sketch and said make a gun, um, they did use CAD drawings. They use an extra sketch. Uh, I was checking it out and I'm looking at what I can get for the same amount of money. And I'm like, I'm looking at Shadow Systems, and I'm like, I got a better looking gun uh, with more options. And it is what it is, bro. Um, Adam's Arms has made slides before. Um, that's what they did back in the day before they got sold. And, hey, remember all those bills everybody was making with Adam's arm slides? Yeah, me neither. So, and they didn't get them out to anyone. <clears throat> they didn't get this out to anyone. I mean, when you were talking about our next next product or, or the CZ, everybody and a mom got a CZ. No one got an Adam's arms. Everybody is using the same uh, uh, commercial print or whatever, commercial copy that was sent out by the company. So no one actually got their hands on it. Um, we were at, uh, I saw, I forgot who wrote it up, but they, they said they handled it at range day in 2020. Well, Chad and I were there. I don't remember we were, seeing it. <laughs> I don't remember seeing it at all. So I don't know if they had it under the table. I don't know if they didn't show up until after we left, but I don't remember anything, but I do remember Chad and I shooting the shadow systems. <laughs> um, we shot a shadow systems, uh, Glock. I, look good great if you want to buy it buy it but i think it, just like chad said is it's a little bit more money than i'm willing to pay for something like this if this is what i'm looking for that's my thoughts exactly uh anybody else got anything on this before i just tell you yeah, that just a real quick real quick option like if you wanted to build something similar to that on your own i think paul and radio right now has their um suppressor height Threaded barrel, complete sides with all the scallops and cuts. It's like three fifty right now, and yeah. build the whole gun half the price of that one. Or I I, I went to Polymer eighty site because they make complete firearms now. Uh, of yeah, course, just buy a whole Polymer eighty. <laughs> MSRP on theirs is five hundred and sixty five bucks. Now, of course, that's without yeah. an optic. That's not optics ready. 
so you can send it off to somebody for mm. 150 bucks and we're still at what 700 bucks so yeah you know i i it's just i'm i'm just throwing that out there but like well it I, doesn't have that vickers tactical trigger cuz you know all those bills too that everybody <laughs> has with a Vickers tactical trigger. I'm I'm saying that if you're going to throw names out there, throw names out that like, oh, man, I want to get one of those. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. um, Apex. That, uh, or uh, yeah, put an Apex Zeb. trigger in it or a Zap yeah. trigger. Or, yeah, I, I, I get you too. I mean, now granted my G43 80% build that I did has a Vickers slide release on it. And... For the G43, that thing's pretty awesome because it's just raised just enough to actually make it so you can catch it. But, you know, hey, that's just because it's one of the few companies that did it for the G43. Oh, I think Vickers makes some really nice stuff. But, I mean, I'm just saying when you're talking a $1,000 Glock, that's not the name I usually associate with Gucci Glocks. And since we're talking about $1,000 pistols, we'll move into the CZ P10F competition model that is actually 99 cents cheaper. <laughs> and Tony's doing something. I don't know what he's doing. My CZ hat. <laughs> Your CZ. Hey, I got my Faxon hat on to go with the Faxon barrel. So, you know. But, yes, so CZ's released their competition ready, full-size CZ10. Uh, it looks like it's running fiber optic front sight, fixed serrated rear sight. Uh, which, you know, hey, but it is also optics ready. Nice, nice plus here. Uh, it's running 19 plus one round, nine millimeter. It is striker fired. Uh, of course, it's got a five inch barrel. Uh, the width is 1.26 inches. It weighs 30 ounces, which seems pretty decent. Overall length is eight and a half inches. You know, of course, it's got the trigger safety, the you know, normal stuff. Uh, it's got kind of a gold magazine base, gold trigger, uh, which is a flat trigger. I can't re- It's in here somewhere, then I read it, you know, like hours apex. ago. Apex. Yes. It, is it an apex a- trigger? Uh, is yes. it an apex trigger? Yes, it is an yeah. apex trigger. Oh, look, one of those names we mentioned earlier. <laughs> uh, so it is an apex flat trigger on it, uh, gold barrel, you know. Hey, it's... If you like CZs and you're looking for a real full size, this thing actually looks pretty cool. It's a, it's a really nice looking firearm to me. Uh, like we said, it is optics ready. Uh, it uses mounting plates. It doesn't really say which ones, but I'm sure they make it for all the normal normal ones that you would want it to be made for. Uh, I w- like this way more than the last one, so... That's that's my well, opinion. What CZ did was um, they're doing the same thing Walter did with the PDP. Is you let them know which plate you need and they'll send it to you. It's forty bucks. Um, so of course the people that got these, they talked about them and they gushed over them. But what I did was go back and look at all the reviews on the CZ P10F and the CZ P10F Optic, and. And I listened to the things that people said about them that they changed or want to change. And that's exactly what CZ did. They listened for this guy. Um, <laughs> they listened for this particular firearm. They gave it a flat trigger because a lot of people were complaining about the shape of uh, the P10F trigger. They also um, added another, what, half inch? It's a five inch barrel now? Yeah, it's a five inch so barrel. So they, they added to the sight radius. They fancied it up a little bit. Um, they gave it a magazine well, which the others really didn't have. They had like the Glock Gen 5 mag well, which was like just shaped into the bottom of the plastic. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I look forward to this. Uh, I dig it. Uh, I wanted one, but we couldn't find it. Now, they said that this might be a limited run for right now until they get more into the country. So if you want one, jump on it. But I look at it. This, oh, and by the way, the barrel is also throated bigger than the normal c uh p10f oh okay so that should help with feeding so they did a lot of things i think they listened to what their customer base had to say they listened to what the reviewers had to say and they made the changes and you got a really good gun that can serve a lot of purposes i feel yep and uh, I, except concealed carry unless you're my size and you could probably right. get away with it and, and i'm gonna correct myself and maybe tony it's an hb 
Industries trigger that it's Apex Tactical Extended Mag Catch and Extended Slide Stop and Back Cover Plate, and then it's an HB Industries trigger. So, yep, you know, hey, you know, I Tony said Apex, and I was like, yeah, okay, and then I skimmed through, and now I actually read it while Tony was blabbing. <laughs> so, uh, anybody else got anything on this? Yeah. I- I didn't see it. How many magazines does this thing come with? You know, I'm it, assuming two. it didn't say but, anywhere I could find. It said it comes with two mags. I think it comes with a, like if you live in my state, it comes with a 10. But it comes with a 19 and... It didn't... I yeah, I think it comes with two. Wait a minute. Okay, here it is uh, on the firearms blog uh, article you linked to. Competition will ship with three mags. There we three go. I just available re- in either nineteen oh, or nice. ten round capacities. So three nineteen is, rounders. Yeah, that's basically standard is three magazines. And you know it uses it uses the P zero nine mags too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that I, I, you're the one that would it uses P zero nine mags. Yeah. Yep, it does. I watched everything I could find on like all of them because I was excited about this in 2019. It's just you couldn't really find them. Right. Right. So that was the CZP 10 F competition ready version. Now uh, I put in it's uh, last week. We had that weird artisan cutlery knife. Well, this is one of their other brands. It's CJRB. I don't, I, I don't know what the letters stand for, but it's their Scoria. So <laughs> Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a black coated PVD blade G 10 handles. It's running AR RPM nine steel in the blade, uh, which is a powdered steel. Uh, I don't know what it's the equivalent to, but I know like ZT knives runs their own version of a powdered steel. I'm not saying this is comparable. Uh, MSRP is ninety three dollars and thirty three cents. Uh, it does have a three point four inch blade. The blade is only point one one inches thick. Uh, it's a flat ground. Uh, Rockwell hardness is 59 to 61. Uh, it's a drop point blade. Overall length is eight inches open and 4.53 closed. It weighs 3.53 ounces. It's got a titanium clip. It's running ceramic ball bearings and a liner lock. It is a flipper with a thumb stud, so you can run that. It is not a deep pocket carry clip. That's, you know, it has a lanyard hole too. If for some reason you want to put a lanyard on it. Which one is it? The Scoria. Do you not have the show notes up? You can't. I don't know what you're. Hey man, don't be asking me a bunch of questions. Okay, but either way, everything else, I kind of skimmed over what the. I I looked up the metal it's using, and I couldn't really find anything to compare it to. Uh, You could probably search and maybe find more, but maybe not because it seems fairly new. The only thing I dislike about this is that it is running a non-deep carry pocket clip. Though it's titanium, so I guess there's that. Uh, that That's that's my only complaint about it. It's a decent-looking knife. But, but when it comes to deep carry, I've, I carry all sorts of pocket knives, and I've never had anybody go, ooh, he's got a pocket knife. True. Deep carry, non-deep carry, blah, blah, blah. Most people don't even notice that. Unless you're a gun guy. Like when I lived in North Carolina, it was open carry state. Very few people even notice when people, other people, are open carrying pistols. The the I reason did because it's like, oh, what do you got? You know. The reason I like deep carry pocket clips is because then I don't catch the butt of the knife on stuff. I just catch the clip. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, that, that, really, that's the only reason. I, I mean, I have plenty of knives that have non deep yeah. carry clips, and that's really the only reason I like a deep carry clip. I'm looking at it right. I like the clip because it looks more like a high end pen. Than, than a knife. Um, also, it looks familiar. It looks a little like the Elementa, the element, the element maybe from uh, Civivi. It, it, it does kind of look a lot like that. It's got more of a place to rest your front finger, I guess, kind of a little kind of. Yeah, out. troil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's got the troil. And also, it kind of looks like some stuff from Kershaw. So it has a good look. It's a nice looking blade. Um, I dig the knife. A little expensive at ninety three dollars for the steel that I don't know what it's equivalent of. Right, and, and that's the yeah, thing. Ninety three bucks means three trips in the woods. I guarantee I'll lose it. Well, that's only thirty <laughs> bucks. Oh, yeah. Thirty well, bucks a trip. When it comes to yeah, when it comes to the the, the little carry lanyard, 
Does anybody actually carry their pocket knives with a lanyard? I think yes. Rob should, so he doesn't lose them. Yeah, probably. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I get. Uh, it, people carry them. They get the lanyards. They weave them in. They have little tchotchkes or whatever you call it on the la- uh, lanyard. Some people put beads okay. on them. So it's a whole thing. What kind of lanyard you have hanging out of your pocket, too? Um, it, it's a whole knife have thing. Like, and Connor's like, Rob, you got to use, use it like a n- nunchuck. <laughs> Just swinging around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a cool-looking knife. Just question the price, but maybe it is worth it. I mean, it didn't say D2, so I'm assuming it's better than D2 steel because the D2, it should be definitely like $30 cheaper. <laughs> right, because so, most of the D2 knives, even from this yeah, company. I've never heard of ARRMP-9 or RMP, right. whatever that is. Yeah. And and that's kind of what I was like, eh. but hey, you know, if it's if if it's a decent blade material, you know, it's probably if the, if the price means anything, it's better than D two steel. But how, how much does it weigh? Uh, three and a half ounces. Yeah. Okay, so again, lightweight. <clears throat> yeah. So I could see it. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know what the liner lock is. If it's a solid liner lock, but again. With this company and with the price ranges in, I'm assuming it's a pretty decent knife, just based on that. And and I was going, like, when I pick a lot of these knives to put in the show, I go to, like, Knife Center or go to, like, Blade HQ or someplace and, and look for brands that have decent, like, reviews on their site. Right. Because, you know, some of the brands, it's like, oh, we got two stars. You know, others are like, eh. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. It's kind of one of those things. It's like in most of this brand, and the they got decent, you know, four stars on average or something on those places. So I was like, okay, they, they're probably worth running it in. Yeah. So we lost Connor for a second, but I guess, oh yeah, is we'll probably, well, he'll probably come back in when he figures it out. But we'll we can be done with this and move on to all our other fun stuff. So. That was the end of the product spotlight and discussion. We do have listener feedback and I didn't write to put the whole thing in here. I just put the relevant stuff, uh, is essentially, essentially what it mounted to. Uh, and Connor's back. I, I see him, but I, it won't let me click him in. So, uh, let me, let me know if I can click him back in or not. Uh, it's from Scott via email. Uh, it said, just wanted to let you guys know that your show is probably my favorite of the different firearms-related shows I listen to. I'm going to actually kick him out, and then he'll have to he'll have to come back in and see if that works. Uh, it says, the first big reason is that it sounds like what a bunch of friends sitting around and talking about this stuff would sound like. It's fun because it's easy to relate to. Second is that you know most people don't have a printing presses in their basement or so have to pick and choose what they can get and how often they can shoot. It was worded a little, a little weird, but you know, I, I, I get it. Uh, and it says third, I don't think I've ever heard a show like yours where it's apparent that you are giving the most honest opinions on the gear or you guys are just idiots who don't know what to do that to make money by shilling. You have to yes. say the nice things to get the nice little things. A little bit of column B, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. It says, yeah. unless competitors are paying, hmm, maybe you guys are smart. Dude, if they're no. paying, I'm not getting any cut of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we have, we, we, we have a, you know, primary arms sponsor and Patriot Patch sponsor that pays our bandwidth. So, you know, those are, those are it. Uh, but yeah, so. Hopefully Connor will be back soon, uh, and if not, we'll just plug stuff for him. Uh, but Tony, or actually Scott, thank you very much for the email and the feedback. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're glad you like the show, Tony. Now, did Definitely. you leave us a, a review on uh, the uh, Apple iTunes or anything? No, it was it was players? it was via email at least that okay that I noticed. Yeah, oh, cool. Can, I hate to sound like a shill, but if you got. Uh, Anyways, if you guys can leave us a, a review on Apple iTunes, that'll help us bump up a little bit in the ratings. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's 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 what they say. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what they tell us. Who knows? Yeah, I I don't I don't know for sure, but that's what that's what they tell us. And it looks like Connor came back. Uh, I had to kick him out so he could actually log yeah. back in. <laughs> uh, do you want to plug your stuff before Tony plugs his diversity shoot? Uh, sure. 
Yeah, just uh, anything here in the garage is pretty much on our website, gunguysgarage.com. If there's something that we have here that's not on the website, you can use the contact us link on our website. And usually we can even get you an even better deal. This insider tip for you guys. <laughs> yeah, we've got Glock parts, AR parts. Wait a minute, we're talking better than the other bio, junk bio that I now? sell. What? Yeah, a few okay. things actually. I can, I can beat that. So for you can listen to the podcast. Here's the hint. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. See, and we, he, oh, put, yeah. well, he oh, put yeah. He put it at Tony's going to slam your mailbox full by the end of the evening. I can tell you that much. <laughs> he, put, he, well, he he told us this stuff at the end. So see, the people that listen to the end of the podcast get all the good stuff. Hey, That's the what, last person yeah, who gave fans. Tony free stuff never get never heard the end of Tony's wanting free shit. I'm just stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, who was that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we thank uh, we thank you for coming on. It was a, I'm hope, hoping you had a good time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, thanks for the largest pound for pound discount code. Uh, we appreciate it. And anytime we can do better than we like shooting, we're all about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> so, Tony, tell us about diversity shoots, and I hear some other podcast is going to be there. Yeah, but before we even get into that, <laughs> you can pick up my latest packs at Black Swan Tactical. Dot com, And you can get the Bubbles Patch. It's only going to be 100 of them made, so get in on it early. Uh, it, the funds actually go to act, help me do what I do and help John Crump do, do what he does. Um, if you don't know who John Crump is, he's one of the guys that breaks a lot of 2A stories from Washington, D.C. He's also the Virginia – he works with the Virginia chapter of Guns – Gun Owners of America, sorry – Vapor lock for a second. So you know the funds are going to be going towards the fight for our freedoms. So, again, the bubbles patch is there. Pick it up. It's hilarious. Uh, if you didn't see me, you can you can watch you can watch John Crump break the news to me. This is not something I came up with. This is something they came up with and just sprung on me, and it's freaking hilarious. If you want to go to one of my diversity shoots, you can do that. Um, it's going to be September 16th. At the Heritage Guild, and I'm going to have to stop watching Chad because he's a dork. <laughs> he's I'm, just, I'm just doing what you do to me. Yeah, I know, but I'm entertaining. You're just a prick. <laughs> oh, jeez. Where's that mute button at? <laughs> With friends like these, who needs enemies? Exactly. <laughs> so the next diversity shoot is the 16th. Please go on uh, the website or any of my social media. That is... Simon says train on Instagram. That's the second is for everyone on Facebook. And that's second for everyone on uh, Twitter. And you can click on the event right link and pick up your tickets. You can also donate to our PayPal and you can become a patron at Patreon and hear the McRib of podcasts because I'm actually recording one now. I have the interview that I did with John Anderson from the Nebraska Firearms Owners Association when I was out in Omaha doing a diversity shoot there. So it's a fun podcast. And, of course, like most of my podcasts, I'm really real on that, you know, unlike here where I'm totally fake. Um, and I really appreciate you guys listening to the stuff and supporting what I do. T-shirts are still available also on my website. If you want to support that, you can get the Lovetron T-shirt. You can pick up any of this stuff and even get my rally T-shirt right here, which is $10 shipped. So you can wear it to rallies or get together with your boys and y'all all can show up uh, at two a advocacy meetings with my shirt on or even go to your legislators and everybody can be rocking the same kind of t-shirt like the moms demand action broads do when they go to one so thanks a lot i really appreciate it i think that's all hey tony Um, you know what else those shirts are good for what jury duty oh yeah you want to get out of (laughs) jury duty show up with something that says gun control equals racism you're out the door with validated parking before lunch can't guarantee it but it's pretty much <laughs> <laughs> now. Now, now who, who's going to be at your your diversity shoot? The guys from the Gun Experiment podcast are going to be there. Um, they are really. It's a really good podcast. You can find it on Spotify. That's where I listen to it. I enjoy it because they're behind the Iron Curtain too. They're out of New York State. Um, real entertaining. They went out to um, what's the name of the Nighthawk. They did a whole interview with the owners of Nighthawk, and you find out about everything they did. They had me on a, about three or four weeks ago. I forget when I was on. Um, we had a lot of fun. 
real laid back guys can't wait they're going to show up with a drone and some other stuff and videotape and take lots of pictures so if you want to meet those guys come out it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be full of like-minded people and we often have a good time hopefully we can go to one of the really cool cigar bars um well okay the cool cigar bar that's in that neck of the woods in pa after it's over with so come out september 16th thursday september 16th 6 p.m the heritage guild eastern pa and that's really only for the live viewers right no wait no that's no me. it's that's the 16th a, bro yeah see i don't know what i'm doing yeah it's okay i'm used to it <laughs> yeah you're pretty you'll marry well I should i should, should i should i distract you <laughs> no you distracted yourself <laughs> enough you forgot when the 16th was hey i got a calendar right in front of me too <laughs> That's it. That, yeah, but it's that, probably one of those bad. sundial calendars. <laughs> no, uh, well, yeah. Because you're old. Because <laughs> you're old. What other kind are there? So, Whatever <laughs> happened before the Julian calendar, that's what's hanging on your wall? That's right. Well, why do you think it was named Julian? I mean, wasn't he your friend? Hated <laughs> him. Went to high school together. Oh. I gave him a swirly. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, send questions, comments, or feedback to us at gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. Don't forget to check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. Don't forget to, forget to visit the Firearms Insider at, you know, firearmsinsider.tv for, you know, reviews. Oh, imagine that. And there's links to all our affiliates and various other things over there. So that's there. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Firearms Insider. Uh, and as always, thank you for listening to the largest pound for pound podcast on the network. And we thank Connor for being here. And we are out. Bye, guys. If you've enjoyed this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear podcast, then go to firearmsradio.tv to hear more firearm related shows.